Jix Towers of Hell is a game like no other on this platform. While some may have 157 towers beaten, nobody has 100% of the game. Despite millions putting their heads into this hostile environment, no matter who you are, there's work to be done. Every couple of months, a little over a dozen towers typically show up. Just when you thought you were ahead, you actually were behind. Despite this game having a vast amount of content, and being a utopia to hardcore obvious usually, this game has its fair share of issues. Welcome back to another episode of JTO Flawed. Let's take a look at the history of today's subject, catastrophic difficulty, and see what can be done to fix it. One of the most well-known sites on the Roblox platform in terms of obbies is the difficulty chart. There are many difficulty chart obbies on this platform, but the Jukes Towers of Hell difficulty chart is the original one. The original difficulty chart came out with the Rings update in September 2018. However, today, there are 12 difficulties, from easy all the way up to catastrophic. Despite what is a simple poll, colored with some tower acronyms on it, this single chart is one of the fundamental principles of the game. Catastrophic today sits at the very top of the difficulty chart and is colored white. Even though this just seems like a simple difficulty to describe how difficult something is, this white sticky mess has a lot of history to it, and some issues and potentially upcoming drama with the Ninth Ring. Let's take a dive on this difficulty's history. Catastrophic would be introduced into the world on January 23rd, 2019, when the Soul Crushing difficulties were announced. But throughout the entirety of Ring 4's development, the Soul Crushing difficulties were used. So, here is the original and first difficulty chart ever made for the game that had soul crushing difficulties on it. The chart would get some revisions over time, but the difficulties that they came up with were insane, extreme, terrifying, never again, and nil. The reason why these difficulties were likely made was due to Tower of Inception being way harder than the other two towers at the time at the Godspeed difficulty, difficulty chart and confusion. Godspeed was the original Soul Crushing difficulty that used the same color as Terrifying. However, a while later, Never Again had its name changed to a new name that everybody knows today, Catastrophic. While it is true that the first Catastrophic Tower confirmed was Stone in Ring 9, there's a really unknown thing that I heavily doubt you know. Stone was actually confirmed for Ring 4. Yep, you heard me right. Oberyn was going to add Stone into Ring 4, and sent staff the picture, but after only a little bit, it was removed. Oberyn, though, never removed the stone portal and put it in server storage. So, shout out to Blocker and Amos who hooked me up with the portal. This is the exact same portal Oberyn sent to the staff team when he was going to put stone into ring 4. The only difference, though, is that CLU wasn't in the background. But hey, Ice was even impressed when I showed him the picture, though. For a while though, Catastrophic just sat on the difficulty chart unused. While Tower of Inferno Galore by Skelly was confirmed, this tower was like stone and never saw the light of day. Being confirmed for rank 9, 8, and almost 7, before it was simply scrapped out of existence. For almost a year, this white sliver of real estate was never touched. In mid-November 2019, 10 months later, Tower of Elongated Runs was confirmed for the 7th ring. As terrifying difficulty. It wouldn't be long though until Tower had its difficulty changed to catastrophic, meaning for the very first time the community believed that this would be the first catastrophic tower in the game. People flocked to play it and they immediately noticed something was wrong. This tower was way more difficult than stone and had insta kill necks scattered throughout the entire thing. The tower was also monstrously long and tedious. The community had buzz about this tower, but in everyone's minds, they knew that this tower was complete and utter garbage. So how did this tower get confirmed for rank 7? Well, I was told that the staff team had a choice to make. This tower or Infernal Galore? This is the one they chose. Tower of Infernal Galore was the tower made part of the Skelly Trilogy, with Shattered Dreams and Corrupted Nightmares. But this tower's gameplay was known to just simply be terrible. But how was Elongated Runs even considered in the first place? 
This tower was reviewed by Coates Ultimate One, a very old community member who was a curator during this period. He gave this tower a 25.5 and a terrifying difficulty rating. I was told that Coates is known to not be skilled enough to review these soul crushing difficulty towers and was known for not playing them all the way through. This tower was reviewed in the old curation system with the 10 10 10 format and its gameplay was rated 9 out of 10. It was likely this review that forked the staff over to believing this tower was much better than it really was. Coates has done a lot of good for this community, even making Tower of Ancient Trickery, which paved way to the themed towers of today. This was a huge mistake that hurt the game though. Upon release, Tower of Elongated Runs was unfortunately abused to a bug. There was a way to use the double jump potion to cheese the tower. This got many people to get the Tower Badge, which drained its popularity. Even though there are 8 in-game victors, over 70 have this badge. While people were playing this tower, it was mainly for laughs and kicks to see how far they could get. No one really wanted to try out this tower. It was high catastrophic on the difficulty chart, miles harder than the previous hardest, impossible movement. This tower just sat in rank 7, just existing. People were commonly inside playing it, but not to try and beat it. People widely regard Tower of Elongated Runs as a failure to the game's history. After Zone 3 was released, it was finally time for Ring 8. Ring 8 was supposed to be a final break ring before Ring 9. Information came out on April 2nd, 2020 that the difficulty range would be medium up to remorseless for non-SCs. Nothing was said in terms of soul crushing difficulty towers, other than there would be two spots. A month later, on May 8th, the community finally got information about Ring 8. While it seemed inconspicuous, it was the Soul Crushing Towers section on the bottom that they had the eyes dropped. For this break ring, catastrophic was an option. A couple days later, Tower Generation Failure was confirmed to be the second catastrophic tower in the game in Ring 8. This was a very low catastrophic tower on the chart, but this tower still had issues in its gameplay. Floors 1 through 5 were extremely easy for this tower. Floor 6 was a massive difficulty spike, which had some infamous jumps, like this 4 stud stick out. And this jump on the outside of the tower. Floor 7 was easier, but it was extremely long for what it was. Floor 8 was full of GBJs and extremely difficult gameplay. One fall could be the end of your run. Floor 9 started off with a terrifying outside section as well and inside had some super hard jumps over GBJs. Needless to say, this tower had its own questionable gameplay as well. Unlike with Tower though, people saw hope. This tower was a low catastrophic, meaning the door would finally be opened. Ring 8 was released on July 8th, and the community had its buzz and share over it. People were playing around in it the same way as Tower, but it was what happened two days later in the night, the community was flipped upside down. Con 2005 was the first person to ever beat a catastrophic tower without using boost item Jesus. This was a huge moment in the game's history and the community celebrated. After a year after it was confirmed, the difficulty was defeated. The community was extremely impressed. It won't be long, however, until the next victor came along. Akira became the second victor just two days later. The community was flabbergasted. Gaminer thought this tower wouldn't be beaten in 2020. Because of these two victors, the sign at the top of TOGF was removed. To the eye of the community, this achievement was extremely impressive. But on July 15th, we got to see how Khan and Akira really beat this tower. Higher up community members were not impressed. They used three major skips on floors 6, 7, and 8. The hardest floors in the tower. On floor 6, they used a wool hop skip that skipped around half of the floor, skipping the scary ladder jump on the outside and another outside part. It came really apparent though that they knew what they were doing. They fell back to the beginning of floor 6, later on back to 5 to do the skip yet again. This was to get an anti-cheat checkpoint to prevent them from getting kicked in the tower. However, they still had to do the 4 stud stick out, one of the hardest jumps in the tower. 
Floor 7 is the longest floor of the tower as stated earlier, and they had their strategies. The dark green challenge was done legitimately to get another checkpoint. Then on the dark red challenge, a high jump was done to skip the rest of 7 and get to the end of 8. After getting to 9 and falling back in to get another anti-cheat checkpoint, they finished the tower normally. These skips got community members furious, as the tower's difficulty was butchered and what seemed to be a low catastrophic wasn't the case. But, you might be asking, how did they know about the anti-cheat checkpoints in the tower? In Akira's video, they credit Khan 2005 and Yash Street. Yash Street was banned from JTO after it was found out a PlayC compiler was used by one of his friends to find out the checkpoints of tower generation failure on release day. Meaning Khan and Akira knew this information likely and found these cheeses to skip a lot of the tower. This got Blockerman furious and started patching every skip he found in the tower. Today, there are no skips on this tower, and the only way you can cheese it is by escaping GBJs. While some people are mad at Blocker for doing this, it definitely closed the door to this tower's win pad for most. The tower would finally be beaten fully legitimately by MyFar on October 18th. Just to make things clear, Khan and I have talked about this issue, however. This is a drama that is old, and I am only mentioning it for the sake of this video. If anything, the community is to blame here for overhyping this win. But this wouldn't be the only time when Khan and Akira got bad publicity because of catastrophic towers. Tower of Elongated Runs got a huge nerf. The insta kill pull on floor 7 was removed, meaning you could catch yourself on floor 5 or 6. This finally opened the door to have Toer to be finally beaten by players. Even though Toer was defeated by 7LB5, he was apparently banned from the game due to Synapse. While there is no proof his Toer run was fake, it does make very few community members suspicious. However, Khan and Akira were back at it again though. It was clear that they did not learn their lessons after beating TOGF. They were using skips on the tower. They were permanently banned for knowing the checkpoints of Toer, as the set team were suspicious that they use a PlayC compiler, Khan and Akira said someone with VM showed them the checkpoints. Akira would later be unbanned, but right before Khan was going to be, he ban evaded and got two world record speedruns, which is why likely he wasn't unbanned. Yashri was also later unbanned from the game. Very recently, however, on January 13th, 2021, Green Bean surprised the world as he became the first person to beat a catastrophic tower on mobile, a feat which had the community really impressed. As of today, there are 30 victors of generation failure and 9 for Tower. So that brings us to today. Even though there are only two towers of this difficulty, this single difficulty gives us a big story to look through. The next ring where catastrophic towers will be added is Ring 9. So let's sit down and see the situation of Ring 9. Before we start, let me discuss some reasons why towers you are expecting to see aren't here. Let's start with Tower of Ruthless Royal Architecture. This tower was cancelled and was submitted to another Towers of Stupidity. So therefore, this tower will not be discussed. The same fate as well as Tower with Cataclysmic Layers as it seems. This tower was submitted for ATOS as well. Tower of Augmented Misery is also not going to be discussed, as this tower has Toxbit being nerfed down terrifying. Finally, Tower of Atrocious Trust Catastrophe will also not be discussed, as this tower has been nerfed down. That leaves us with two different nominees to sit down and talk about. Now, let's get to the issues and the problems, as we take the two nominees into a showdown. The two main nominees for Catastrophic Towers in Ring 9 are Tower of Champions Road by Cloy and Tower of Cruel Punishment Revamp by Wasabi. Let's start with the underdog, Tower of Cruel Punishment Revamp. This tower was originally so high up on the Catastrophic table it was considered to be nil. However, this tower has since been nerfed down to a low mid Catastrophic. But I've heard it's mid high Catastrophic, so I really don't know. From my understanding, this tower is much better than it used to be. This tower has values like elongated runs, it's very long and has its unforgiving moments. But it's a tower you'd 100% expect to see in the game. 
It has client objects in the weird and wacky jump style that I think all of us are accustomed for. This tower recently got reviewed and got a 29 out of 30. If you want to see more of this tower, Kirby Commentaries on his channel has a video showcasing all the jumps in the unnerved version. I would highly recommend checking it out, it's in the description below. The other tower, however, is an extremely popular tower, and it's made by Cloy, and is known as Tower Champions Road. Floor 5 is completely free and it is a break, and there's a safety net as well at floor 6, but don't let that fool you. This tower is extremely difficult. This is a high catastrophic tower in the difficulty chart, but this is Purist though. Unfortunately, Purist towers don't have the best reputation around the JTO community. People see Purist towers as an excuse to not use the kits and are bland. But this tower is extremely popular, since Akira has beaten it. This tower has been buffed though. Also, wonder why many towers have their own terrain for Ring 9 nominations? Tower of Champions Road started that. This tower is famous for its wind room as well, being massive and vibrant. Now that I've given you the basic rundown of the two biggest nominees for catastrophic towers in Ring 9, as well as talking about the ninth ring itself in the last video, Let's finally go ahead and start talking about the Ring 9's difficulty chart and the obelisk. First, let's talk about the difficulties that are going to be available for Ring 9. The spots include Intense and Above. In the last video, I discussed about the idea of maybe making it challenging and Above. Ring 7 is widely considered to not be a fan favorite, and this is essentially going to be a more hellish version of Ring 7. On the other hand, Intense is a fan favorite non-SC difficulty. So, is Intense as a baseline good for you? If you think challenging should be considered or not, is for you to decide though. Let's finally talk about the obelisk. In part 1, I showed that Gamma was saying it was likely going to be a high remorseless obelisk with two safety nets. But, this information might be outdated. I'm curious, is high remorseless a good option? Maybe because this is the final thing, and the last thing in the Great Inferno, should this be low insane? Should it be easier? Does it need a safety net at all, maybe? Just remember, removing safety nets will make the overall gameplay in this obelisk more difficult, likely. Feel free in the poll after this video to share your opinion. Before we talk about catastrophic difficulty towers, I want some community opinion on how many soul-crushing towers the ring should have. The Ring Select says that it is planned that over half the towers inside the ninth Ring are Soul Crushing difficulty. This means we could see 7 or more Soul Crushing towers inside the game. This is totally a personal preference thing and I don't want to share my opinions on this as these videos are for the community's sake, but I will say this. More towers that are Soul Crushing means more towers that are in general inaccessible. This is something that I'll have you guys fill out in the poll. But finally, let's get onto the beef of this ring that everyone cares about. The Catastrophic Towers. Since these two towers are well regarded, and I will say both of these are likely being considered by the development team, it only makes sense that we put both TOCPR and TOCR in the game, right? Well, there is one thing we need to remember here. This is a ring and not a zone. Only 12 to 14 towers are being considered for the ninth ring. This is not a zone where we can see upwards of 20 towers. So therefore, do we really want two towers that are not going to be touched by almost everyone in the ring? That's something for you to decide. Well, maybe one tower is good then. But which one would it be? Tower of Champions Road is purist, and well, purism doesn't have a good reputation in this community. It's also high catastrophic, meaning there's a big difficulty gap between Tower and TOCR, as Tower is considered to be a low mid kata. So what about having TOCPR and say screw TOCR? Well first of all, the community definitely likes TOCR more as a whole, and Tower and TOCPR are around the same place on the difficulty chart. So there are three options that I will present to you in terms of the flawed issue of the catastrophic difficulty in Ring 9. We could put both TOCR and TOCPR in the game. However, this leaves two spots of the final ring completely inaccessible to most. This is a ring and not a zone, so there are less towers here. There could be as little as 12 towers in the game here. 
do we want one sixth of the towers to be catastrophic? TOCPR would also be the only one added as a potential solution. But while this does fit, the community would likely be pissed as TOCR is the one the community has their eyes on vainly. Also, considering that this has been nerfed down, Tower and TOCPR are around the same place on the chart. Lastly, having only Tower of Champions Road. This is definitely the cat that people want, but it's purest. It would definitely be an outlier though. There would be a massive gap on the difficulty chart. So now, I bring the burden off to you. The whole preface of this series is for you to learn the history of certain subjects, and I ask you guys what you think should be the way it is solved. Each option has its own advantage and disadvantage. A compromise and uncontroversial decision would to have both of these towers confirmed for the ninth ring, but this would mean less space for the general population. Confirming only one of these will have its own controversy likely, but I am curious though. What do you guys think? The link to the poll is in the description below for you to vote on what you believe in. Thank you everyone for the insane support for this series. Ever since the Elite Obvious video, I have gotten insane support for more of these. I've been constantly being asked in-game if more are coming. I hope this is good as the Elite Obvious video. I was shocked that the EO role was removed a little after my video was released. I do understand your concerns though for these videos. To try and prevent bias, I will keep my personal views out of these videos. I have Punky reading over the scripts for these videos to make sure what I am saying is for the greater good. I have a group of people out there to try and find certain pictures and sources and even old players out there to try and make sure everything is up top notch. Thank you everyone who is in the JTO flawed crew that makes these videos possible. Remember, these videos are not meant to be controversial. These videos are meant for the community to bond together in a civilized manner to discuss opinions. These poll results are made public for everyone to see. Anyone who causes drama from these videos, I say shame on you. Your opinion is your opinion. It doesn't mean to shove it down other people's faces. Thank you everyone for watching. I am Logan ISL, and I'll see you the next time on JTO Flawed. Feel free to discuss your opinions in the comments as normal, but make sure to be polite and open to other people's views. Have a good rest of your day, everyone.